Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic, and that's right, today we are going back to the Melty and getting everything sorted and working with a big thank you to PCBWay who are sponsoring this video, and they now have a CNC service which is actually where these parts have come from. The new weapon upgrade parts, which hopefully are going to survive fights a whole lot better than the old ones, uh, came from PCB Way's CNC service, which is really, really cool. Anyway, uh, today, as I said, we're going to get the Melty back up and running. Uh, it's in a bit of a state right now because I have been doing some electronics fault finding and um, looking at basically why I wasn't getting a heading light and why I wasn't able to translate in uh, the last set of fights that the Melty had. Now, it comes down to kind of two different things. One, I accidentally shorted some stuff together when I extended the LED off the board and put it into a different position. And two, it looks as though the actual wire that did the talking between the ESCs and the motors to tell the brain how fast we were spinning disconnected at some point. Probably actually during the packing because there is a lot of electronics to fit into a very small space and I probably just, yeah, stretched the connection and boop, there it went. Um, so we're going to need to rigidify that, probably actually double that up so that we have a kind of backup in there. And then I also want to play around with some other stuff in today's episode to see if we can uh, improve our heading reliability and readability uh, with the Melty. Anyway, before we do all that, we should have a look at the brand new parts that we got from PCB Way. So here is the one surviving old part. All of the rest of them got completely mangled in the fight with Iron Tooth. And even this one, the bolt holes are very, very skew if. I'm not sure if you can see that in here or not, but yeah, that is at a fairly significant angle. These are just an ABS printed part and they were tapped after uh, the actual print had succeeded. And yeah, they weren't, uh, they weren't the greatest. They do actually though have uh, teeth printed into them for the uh, timing belt so that they reduce the slip. Thankfully though, these new ones, which again are CNC'd by PCB way out of 6061 aluminium, they have uh, come pre-tapped and everything, which is really, really good. But I didn't include the uh, belt teeth on this because you don't need that in aluminium because if the belt slips and slides around on the aluminium, it is going to produce a little bit of friction, but that friction is not going to do the same thing as it did on the ABS and melt through everything. However, I will say there is a significant difference in weight between uh, these two pieces because obviously one is solid aluminium and the other one I think is about 30% ABS. So there is a fair amount of heft difference between the two of these. But that is okay, because what we're gonna do is we ran a heavier weapon on this. I think my middle weight weapon, which was like 120 grams or something. And instead on this one, we're gonna run a smaller weapon at 100 grams. But because of the way the Melty works, we're actually not going to lose too much in terms of our weapon output power, because we've still got all of this weight out on the edge of the Melty. So it should be totally fine. Uh, yeah, I really, really quite like these things. The finish on them is pretty decent for what they are, and yeah, they, they look good, and they should uh, hold up. They feel ridiculously solid, especially compared to this ABS part. The only thing that I messed up here is that the bearing recess, I had it set up for ABS printing, which does shrink and change size a little bit. So when I sent them the manufacturer's file, the bearing does kind of uh, just, it's very loose in there. It should actually be a tighter fit than that. It should be a press fit, but this is the first time I've ever had somebody see and see something else for me. And as I said, I left it at the tolerance for ABS parts, which doesn't work for um, CNC aluminum parts. These are actually a better tolerance than the 3D printed part, which I guess is what you should be expecting really. Uh, anyway, that is enough on these for now. We're going to put these aside and we're going to uh, bolt them back onto the Melty at the very end. For now, I need to sort out all of this mess.
Ah, so that was a test. Um, things are interesting. We can get the multi to spin up. We can get the multi to translate. However, uh, the green light is the heading and the blue light is the demand position. And as you could uh, probably tell in some of those clips, I hope you could, uh, I was not getting translation in the direction of the uh, demand position that I was pushing. Uh, so I was getting a direction out of the Melty, but I was not getting the one that I wanted, which made driving uh, difficult, especially in the kind of enclosed space that I have, um, or the relatively tight space that I have, and not wanting to hit anything made life a little bit interesting, which meant that a lot of those tests had to be quite short. Um, yeah, so that's kind of annoying, and I think it's because of light drift, because uh, our maths isn't exactly right, uh, which I can kind of tweak and change, and I do want to do in here in half a second. And I also think it's because currently the motors are on for too much of the arc. So uh, the way melties work really quickly is if you want to go that way, uh, you've got an arc between here and there where you can turn the wheels on to add extra power. And currently I'm using the full 180 degree arc, but I probably should only be using like 60 to uh, 90 degrees inside that arc. Because uh, especially with the melty heading not being like perfectly fixed, that would help kind of lower some of that creep that I'm getting where I'm getting the robot moving off of uh, the right angle. I also do have a little dial that I can adjust to kind of trim up where the heading is, but at the moment it's not high enough fidelity. It's set up so that I can give it like plus or minus 100, which realistically I don't need. So I'm going to give it a little bit more fidelity, try and get it to actually, yeah, uh, get the value a little bit closer to where I want it to be rather than yeah me trying to turn the knob and getting it getting a massive swing and having the heading suddenly stop pivoting all the way around the robot. Oh uh, yeah and I think finally too I think we're not actually balanced in here in actual fact I'm pretty sure we're not because if you have a look at this uh, the multi is sitting back on this particular edge uh, so if I like push down on the front we're swinging to the back, which means I actually need to rearrange all the electronics in here and try and get that working. Uh, which, speaking of the electronics, we're gonna have a quick look in here because one of the other things I've been thinking about was potentially adding a gyroscope or an accelerometer to try and get better, more accurate readings for the position, but we are full to the brim in here. Uh, we are just absolutely stacked with electronics uh, so there's not really much I can do about that. Ah, so there we go, two more tests under the belt, and uh, it's interesting. I implemented the thing where I wasn't running the motors quite as often through the turns, but uh, yeah, that worked a little bit, and it did actually translate better now, but what I'm actually finding is as I'm translating, the spin speed is slowing down, which I don't particularly like. So that's because at the moment I've got one wheel speeding up and one wheel slowing down, uh, at each part of the rotation where motor speeds need to happen. So uh, I then changed it for the second test so that only I, one wheel sped up and the other one just stayed at the regular cruising speed. 
and it didn't translate as well, which was interesting. Uh, the other thing too is that before both of those tests, I realized that I had the heading light and the motor setups on two different types of code. So I uh, standardized all of that and made sure they were on the same amount of code. And then in the second test, I did a blue light for demand and a red light for anti-demand or 180 degrees off demand, just to see where the Melty thought everything was and it actually lined up where I was expecting it, at least for the light. Now, this is the problem that I've realized is that uh, I'm controlling these motors with servo signals, which are a two millisecond or up to a two millisecond pulse inside a 20 millisecond frame, which means that they do a little pulse and then they wait until the end of 20 milliseconds and then they go again. But the Melty can spin up to 216 degrees in that time. And that means from here, all the way around to here, which means that uh, using servo signals, I am only sending one command to each wheel per rotation, which means that while I was trying to turn on or speed up here and slow back down here, I was getting none of that, or maybe a little bit of it if I was really lucky. So, uh, now I need to do a lot more code and get the Melty working with a different system, a probably a sped up um, servo system, I think. I, I don't know, we'll, we'll give it a whirl. Also, I, uh, just quickly while I was coding some of that stuff up, I went ahead and added in our, uh, or one of our weapons, and oh, these things look so nice. I need a spacer in the top still, so the weapon is still a little bit wobbly, and I do need to bolt it all together, but it looks really good. I love these aluminium pulleys. They are going to be a massive, massive upgrade. Okay, so uh, this is as good as it's gonna get for now. Realistically, uh, I should have put D-Shot into this thing and uh, or coded up D-Shot, but I just didn't have any time. So what I've done instead is running a very, very reduced uh, frame for the servo pulses I was talking about earlier, and it works. It's actually more responsive. It works a little bit better. Uh, I'm actually really annoying because I've just realized that I didn't have audio in any of my test footage in this video, which uh, sucks because some of the interesting stuff that happens with this Melty happens and you can only really hear it, especially the speeding up and slowing down as the Melty is trying to translate. You can really hear that more than you can see it. Um, anyway, uh, it does now work on these slightly reduced servo pulses. It seems to have more control. The Meltying seems to work a little bit better. It's not perfect. There's a lot I could change and upgrade. However, I am completely out of time on this video. I need to get this uploaded and I need to uh, mount these weapons up while this video is editing basically because uh, fights start tomorrow basically. Uh, and I've still got a few little bits and pieces I need to do on other robots as well. So this is gonna be it for this video. Uh, coming up very, very soon will be a fight report for It Doesn't Work At All, the Twin Spinner Melty. Uh, expect some craziness. I have just seen the fight card for the weekend and uh, yeah, we're in a hard hitting group with this Melty. So yeah, the Melty might not survive past one or two fights, but we'll see because you never know until the fight is cold. So anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this one. I hope you're keen to see some more Melty action because we're going to get it and I will see you in the next video. Oh, 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 oh,